Luffy's Devil Fruit is not the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Instead, it is something so special that the past world government had to erase it from history. By the end of this video, you will be completely f***ing mind blown when you hear what his Devil Fruit actually is. I have concrete evidence that Oda based Luffy's Devil Fruit on real life mythology and it's not Sun Wukong. And he's been building this up since the very beginning of the story, way back when Luffy ate the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Shanks did freak out because Luffy is now unable to swim, but I promise you it goes much deeper than that. Have you ever wondered why Lucky Roo had a drawing of the Devil Fruit and why they knew it was named the Gomu Gomu no Mi? It's because there's a history behind that Devil Fruit and Oda has been feeding us clues since the very beginning. For instance, CP0 spoke on how Who's Who ran off with intelligence that was known to be very old. Key note here is that this isn't new information, but it's old information from the long distant past. Who's Who was a former CP9 member, so yeah, it would make sense for him to have all sorts of classified information, but what they are referring to is his knowledge about Sun God Nika. Who's Who says that slaves in the long distant past would pray to a legendary warrior that would free them, and that legendary warrior was named Sun God Nika. Now we can actually connect Sun God Nika to a character we already know, and that character is Joy Boy. Joy Boy and Nika are two different names that are related with laughter, yet you can easily find the name Nika within it. When it comes to Oda, there is no such thing as coincidence. Now Nika was known to bring smiles to people's faces and deliver them from suffering. Joy Boy literally had joy in his name and he seems to be a key figure in making the ancient kingdom a united country. Throughout the entire story, we see Luffy bring smiles and joy to those suffering. So whether Luffy's literally Joy Boy or not, there's a clear metaphorical similarity between the two characters. Even during the joyous celebration at Skypea, Oda says that it's one of his favorite scenes. Looking closely, there's a silhouette of Luffy having a great time, but this silhouette looks exactly alike to the silhouette who's who envisioned hundreds of chapters later. Talk about foreshadowing. And another instance of a Luffy and Nika connection is when Oda drew Luffy as Ken from Street Fighter. Ken doesn't even have flames as hair, so that feature is 100% Oda's addition. With this drawing, you can easily see how strikingly similar it is to Sun God Nika's silhouettes. This also perfectly matches how Wisdom Kings are portrayed, and it's a hint to Luffy's connection to Sun God Nika. Moreover, there's an obvious correlation between these three characters that Oda is trying to depict. It also turns out that these three characters are all enemies of the world government as well. Joy Boy was a citizen of the ancient kingdom, and their downfall was brought by 20 other kingdoms. We learn this from Doflamingo, and he also says that these 20 kingdoms created the current world government. They then went on to call themselves celestial dragons or even gods. Referring back to Law's flashback, Kotozone quotes members of the D-Clan as God's natural enemy. So therefore, we understand that Joy Boy was a member of the D-Clan and he was killed by the current world government. The Void Century has been a key piece in the overarching storyline of One Piece. The Gorosei and their minions did something terrible in the past and they want it covered up by any means. Luffy being the savior to these countless countries is a ticking time bomb for the world government. At some point, Luffy's going to have to enact revenge for the sake of Joy Boy in return, fulfilling Joy Boy's wishes, and most importantly, inheriting his will. Inherited will is a central concept in the world of One Piece, and it's the idea of passing on one's dreams and ideals to future generations. We see this as early as Logetown. Roger says that these things cannot be stopped. Inherited will, people's dreams, the ebb and flow of the ages. As long as people seek the answer to freedom, these will never cease to be. Joy Boy most likely had a dream of world peace and world freedom, but this allowed good to coexist with evil. This is a complete contrast to modern day governmentcy, where they don't even allow people to study history. We know Luffy values freedom, since his dream of becoming Pirate King means he'd be the most free man in the world, but Luffy is not a selfish person. He's the type of guy that would use his own limitless freedom to allow others to be free as well. So to simplify, Luffy inherited the will of Joy Boy, whose dream was world freedom, and Luffy will fulfill this inheritance by seeking the answer to freedom. Luffy is the fated chosen one in a world where everyone dreams of becoming a pirate king. Thousands and thousands of people set sail in search of the One Piece, but only one man will be able to reach Joy Boy's treasures. We aren't reading from the perspective of someone who failed to be the pirate king, we are reading from the perspective of the one who managed to get it right. This 
deep connection between Luffy and Joy Boy goes deeper than just inherited will. I would even argue that they are connected by power, and by the end of this video, I'll tell you exactly what that power is. Luffy's Devil Fruit is very special, and the only reason Shanks got his hands on it is because he stole it from a world government ship. Like, Luffy's fruit was so special that who's who was punished and imprisoned for losing it. It's clear that this fruit was very important to the world government since they sent Cypherpole agents to escort it. Comparing this fruit to the Ope Ope no Mi, we have to wonder why the world government wanted the Gomu Gomu no Mi in the first place. For the Ope Ope no Mi, Marines were willing to spend as much as 5 billion berry for it since it grants eternal life. They even nicknamed it as the ultimate devil fruit because of that. So again, why did they go out of their way to get the Gomu Gomu no Mi? It's possible that they knew it was important, but they just didn't know why. When Zunisha was approaching Wano, the Gorosei were speaking about a devil fruit. They said that it hasn't awakened for centuries and that it's only a legend to them. Let's highlight how they even ask why the world government would bother to give one specific devil fruit another name. This implies that there were Gorosei members and world government members before them. This also implies that they don't understand what makes the devil fruit so valuable since they don't know why it was renamed. So the Gorosei could have tried to get the Gomu Gomu no Mi for the sake of it being an ancient legend, but they don't know why that's the case. The Gorosei also says that past members tried to erase it from the annals of history. This is nothing new to the likes of the world government since they tried to erase islands like Ohara, people like Zebek, and knowledge like the Void Century. All they do is silence people and cover up anything that doesn't fit their agenda. Now it's possible that the ancient devil fruit aka the Gomu Gomu no Mi was meant to be erased because it's an extension of Joy Boy, the ancient kingdom, and the void century. It's far too convenient for this devil fruit to be centuries old like the void century and detrimental to the face of the world government. Now on the topic of Joy Boy, this is a One Piece character that's actually based on a real life person. Indonesia once had a king by the name of Joyo Boyo who was coined by the nickname Ratu Adil. Joyo Boyo was very popular for for his just and prosperous rule, and we know that the ancient kingdom had enough power to dominate the entire planet. Joyo Boyo foretold the day that when white men would one day establish their rule on Java and oppress people for many years. Java was an actual island he lived on and is very similar phonetically to Jaya. Now Javanese people believe in a cyclical history of alternating prosperity followed by an era of suffering. The One Piece world was in prosperity when the ancient kingdom was in rule but once the void century began, it turned into a world of suffering. I won't go much deeper than this because I already have a full-fledged video on this concept, link at the top of the screen. But Joyo Boyo predicted that someone from the future would arrive as the leader of Indonesia, and their name would be Ratu Adil as well. According to Joyo Boyo, the beginning of this great leader's life will be difficult. He will conquer many difficulties, humiliation, and poverty, but he will rise above it all due to his sincerity and steadfast heart. The just king will be born in the dark age of suffering to restore order, harmony, and justice in the world. If we apply this to One Piece, Luffy will become the new Ratu Adil, aka the bringer of world peace. He'll do this by destroying the world's government, in return having Luffy fulfill the inherited will and dreams of Joy Boy. Joy Boy is not Momonosuke, it's not Dragon, and it's definitely not Vivi. The real Joy Boy is right before our eyes preparing to bring world peace. Like I said earlier, this world peace will be brought partly because of Luffy's shared power with Joy Boy. There's countless examples of why Luffy's fruit is not what it seems, such as when Kaido questioned the trajectory of Luffy's attacks. He said that Rubber should not be able to do this. What if Luffy's devil fruit is not the Gomu Gomu no Mi? What if Luffy's Gomu Gomu no Mi is actually a renaming of a different fruit? What if Luffy's devil fruit isn't just Rubber and all the gears and forms and mechanics to it is a hint to its true nature. The past world government renamed it to something much less enticing, this being the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Because in truth, it's actually the Hito Hito no Mi model Hanuman. The ever so popular theory of Luffy's devil fruit being Sun Wukong is awesome, but some scholars say that Sun Wukong derived from Hanuman. So in Hindu mythology, Hanuman is a god and divine Vanara. Vanara refers to monkeys or a race of forest dwelling 
people. This is quite ironic since Luffy comes from the monkey family and he grew up training in a forest with wild animals. Hanuman is also able to stretch his body parts just like Luffy is able to stretch because of his devil fruit. Hindu god Hanuman also knows the science of Kamarupa which allows him to take any form he wants just like how Luffy has multiple gear 4 forms. This also allows the god to change his sizes at will yet again relating to Luffy's ability to enlarge parts of his body or maybe even in the future his full body. In Hindu legend Hanuman was a very hungry deity that even tried to eat the sun which which relates to Luffy's everlasting hunger with meat. Hanuman also has a natural enemy named God Indra who is associated with the sky, lightning and thunder which yet again relates to Luffy's encounter and defeat of God Enel. Hanuman was also known to be Brahmakari, in other words celibate, which matches Luffy's nature. Just look at how he treats Boa Hancock. Even during the raid of Onigashima, characters refer to Luffy as the Wisdom King and Hanuman just so happens to be the God of Wisdom. This goes further than Hanuman though because the father of Hanuman is Veyu, who is the Lord of the Winds. Veyu is also known as Prana, meaning the life force, which could be a reference to hockey. Once again, this relates to Luffy as his father Dragon seems to manipulate wind to some extent. This also gives credence to the idea that Dragon is the ancient weapon of Uranus, which is known as the god of the sky. Some believe that Garp doesn't directly address Dragon as his son, so maybe he does this because he is Uranus. Are you ready to be mind blown? So Hanuman has a second father, but I believe that Oda is switching this around so that this second father is Luffy's grandfather. That grandfather in Hindu mythology is known as Kasari. Kasari was a male Vanara, aka monkey, who is brave by nature and a chief. Kasari at one point found a great monster named Shabazadana who is continuously persecuting holy saints. Kasari confronted this monster and hit him forcefully with his fist. There was a great wrestling match and Kasari was finally successful in slaying him. This whole Hindu mythology sounds so damn similar to the God Valley incident. Celestial dragons aka gods or holy saints once lived on an island that Roxy Zebek tried attacking. Zebek was known for destruction and taboo practices. Coincidentally, Garp played a part in taking down Zebek and he even has the nickname of Garp the Fist. Kasari was also a chief of Sugriva's Vanara force which could be a direct reference to the marines. He even prayed for Veyu to be his son, so maybe Garp prayed for Dragon to be his son or Uranus to be his son. Wanna know the icing? on the cake? Kasari aka Garp actually had a wife named Anjana and they were in Apsara. The English translation for the word Apsara is a celestial nymph or a celestial maiden. Applying this to One Piece would mean that Garp's wife was a celestial dragon. In legend, Anjana used to live a luxurious lifestyle but she got bored of it and left her kingdom to live a regular life. This is extremely similar to what Doflamingo's father did. While she descended to earth, she came across a monkey which could translate to One Piece by her leaving Mary Jawa and finding Garp. One day Anjana saw a strong man fighting a lion and as soon as his eyes fell upon her she turned into a monkey. This further connects to Garp because we do have pictures of him with lions and her marrying him is a metaphor to Anjana becoming a monkey. Anjana was then cursed by a sage which could mean in the One Piece world Garp's wife was punished or killed. This would explain why Garp refuses to work for the Celestial dragons even though he values justice. This rabbit hole goes very deep so if this video hits 3,333 likes I'll make a mega theory on the monkey D family including Garp's wife. But back to Luffy. Somehow, some way, Shanks discovered all of this information regarding his devil fruit. He then decided to meet up with the Gorose and snitch on Luffy about it. Shanks is a diplomat who values balance in the world, but he has a hidden agenda that no one else should know about. He may feel like Luffy awakening this Hanuman devil fruit gets in the way of his agenda and gets in the way of world balance. A kid like Luffy who did nothing but look up to Shanks would be heartbroken to know his own power could destroy their relationship. But as Roger once said, these things cannot be stopped. Inherited will, people's dreams, the ebb and the flow of the ages. As long as people seek the answer to freedom, these will never cease to be.